Jordan, uh, in order that we may recognize you for your tremendous contribution, we hand you this certificate, which in some small way expresses our devotion. citizen and uh, I just don't believe that they could go in and get secret documents and pass them around to the world. There must have been uh, some kind of classification uh, otherwise they wouldn't have had them hidden away in vaults and things and to pass them out I, I think that it's uh, pretty flagrant myself and uh, I don't think that the copy after reading a lot of the stuff I think most of the populace knew what was in the papers and uh, it's like watching an old movie. I think we have enough of those.
did the passengers react? The passengers didn't know what was going on until he took me after he had moved all the mail forward and all the female aft. He took me at gunpoint to the rear of the aircraft and walking down the aisle with a gun on me, everyone, I just then realized. Do you have any knowledge of any of the passengers plotting any escape plan or, or to take the guns away? We told the United States, we told everyone the United States. I was begging everybody, please do what he said. Because every time someone moved in front of him on the aisle, he jacked it further than my room. And I was begging. Could you be rational enough to wonder if he really would shoot, or was it such a tense that you would just do anything he said? I didn't know what he was going to do. When she had the steward, the stewardess, was it, she was from, coming from the first class time. Did you think they were going to shoot the stewardess? No, I thought they were going to take the plane to see me. Well, Brandis called about oh, a little afternoon yesterday, and um, I was a little concerned. At first I thought, well, maybe this isn't, a, you know, a crank call. And that, because I, this was, you know, I thought, well, this couldn't be. But um, then I realized it was. I was, I was a little concerned. But my only I was concerned. But, when um, did you first hear from your husband after he was safe and sound and had been released? Oh, he called for this morning. What did he have to say? Uh, he said he was fine. He sounded real tired. But he said all the crew was just fine, and they were on the ground, and they were real glad, real thankful to be down. Well, Mrs. Bessett, now that you know your husband is safe, what is your reaction? <laughs> Relief and joy, of course. What has he told you about the trip on the phone? Uh, nothing at all, uh, other than the fact that they were safe, and uh, he would be home as soon as he could get here. Were you ever terribly afraid? Well, sure. Um, you know, we're like normal human people, and uh, people are frightened of things like this. Sure we were. I'm not sure yet. I, I'm thinking, I've been thinking about it since I left Philadelphia last week, because as I said, I was here for an Academy of Achievement, and we spoke with so many people from all over the United States. And I think I just want to relate to them that the idea of patriotism is what the country was first founded on. And we should get away from all the complex things that we've hung on to the word and that we've added in our own concepts. And we should just realize that for freedom and democracy, you have to be willing to stand up and take a stand. And you have to work for it. It just can't be given to you. Do you believe that America is going to have to help itself? No one else will? Definitely. I think it's true in anything you do. You have to help yourself. No one's going to give you something in a, on a little silver platter. And if you believe strongly, if you want freedom, don't expect to be born into it. It's going to be there because we know from other countries in the world they haven't had freedom and people were born into slavery or whatever. And I think it's something we have to work for. And if we want to be proud of it, I think you can't condemn without working for what you think is right. I cannot tell you the role he will play, Jean, but I can tell you this much, that John Conley has um, arrived at a spiritual plateau where he does not consider himself in America as a Democrat or a Republican, but he considers himself an all-American for the good of humanity. And he is not going to be partial to any program just because it belongs to Republicans or Democrats. He is weighing everything he's doing very carefully so it is good for humanity, even if you're not a Texan, as long as it's good for the people. Do you, think, do you think I think he's a great American, a great man. Do you think he will, will serve in higher public office, like his office? He is going, I'm going to say this, he is going to be of higher service to humanity. I cannot tell you yet. I hope to be able to tell you in my June forecasts of 1972. Joni, what inspired you to enter the Soapbox Derby? Well, Mr. McDonald said that uh, if, since I worked so hard helping him with the other boys, if it helped me build a car, if they let girls race. Could you describe your car for us? Well, it's, uh, 
medium size. It's got pink with yellow flowers. And how does it run? It runs, I guess, just fairly. Better than some and not as good as others. As last year's champion in Fort Worth, you didn't get to run on this new track, did you? Do you think they'll run faster here? Yes, sir. They, we raced on Stadium Drive over by TCU, and it's not a very steep hill, and you only got going about 25 miles. Well, you have to keep them wet, so we had, we rigged bilge pumps into each box and we kept them going all the time. And then you have to keep them from drying out, so we cover them all with lanolin. The main problem would be one of temperature control. The an these animals can, can't cool themselves down, yet they heat up rapidly. So we lower the cabin temperature to about, in this case, 55 or 60 and we have the cold water circulating on them, keep them wet, and we have the lanolin on them to cover up any spot which might not get wet. And uh, if the trip doesn't take you too long, you're in good shape. 